What a beautiful day. Happy Mother's Day. I am so, so, so glad to be here. Uh, just to clarify, I cleaned the toilets on the Shonda Pierce tour bus. <laughs> and I worked with Larry the Cable Guy before he was a tow truck. So, <laughs> just so y'all know. I get impressed with that intro. You know, I'm, I'm blessed that I got to work with those people. Um, they're famous. I'm not famous. I mean, I'm doing good. I'm here in Athens, Texas with you people. So, <laughs> woo! <laughs> I love it. Um, I was in Kentucky last week because my career is skyrocketing. And, um, <laughs> and y'all did such a beautiful job advertising that beautiful poster out there. Uh, they put my name on a whiteboard. It was nice. Um, <laughs> like I was some kind of blue plate special. <laughs> it's like next week, K Dodd and some peach cobbler. There we go. <laughs> so <laughs> it was cool. Um, but and my mama's so proud. She was like, oh, honey, we've waited your entire career to see that name in Expo Marker. And there it is. <laughs> there it is. Uh, <laughs> um, I love it here in Texas. This is my daughter and I. It's our first time ever in Texas, and we are in love. Yes. Y'all don't, y'all seem a little... <laughs> Um, your roads could use some work, but we're in love. There was one yesterday, I'm not sure, I think Law & Order filmed an episode on that road. Um, it was, <laughs> was kind of bad, and we came down 175, you know, from the airport, because that's the speed limit on that road. And um, <laughs> there's some hovercraft vehicles coming from <laughs> Dallas. <laughs> And went through Gun Barrel City. I want to stop there and get a driver's license today. <laughs> Woo. Can you imagine getting pulled over in Atlanta and I pull out of Gun Barrel City? <laughs> I feel like, any questions? Uh, and we're, you know, we're a, we're a guns family. I know I'm in Texas. I have to love guns. My husband does. Uh, we have a city near us. I was telling Pastor Mark on the phone last. We have a city near us called Kennesaw, Georgia. It is the only city. Oh, y'all know? Well, can I get a ride? I got to get back um, <laughs> today. <laughs> Kennesaw, Georgia, they say is the only town with a decent gun law. You have to own a firearm if you live in the city limits of Kennesaw. Yes, can we get an amen from y'all? I think that's just fabulous. Their crime rate is zero. <laughs> yes. So, so my uh, pastor introduced me as K. Dodd. That is my name, but I have another name. My first name is Velva K. Dodd because, you know, my parents wanted me to grow up drinking. And um, <clears throat> so... Some of you know that that means my daddy wore some expensive cologne. Um, <laughs> my people over 50, right there. <laughs> For you young folks, it's an aftershave called Aqua Velva. <laughs> you can buy it at a gas station. <laughs> it's blue. It looks like Tidy Bowl. Um, it's <laughs> kind of... I was just always grateful Daddy won that. Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> we'll wait, darling. Um, no, I was just always thankful Daddy named me and said to Mama she was partial to cheese. I could be Velveeta K up here. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, oh, thank you. Um, but my Mama, I, I, I hate being separated from her today, but... Uh, when the Lord called me to do this a few years ago, my family and I, we talked about that, that, you know, we were going to miss some holidays and things like that. But when you're called to do something, you know, you just got to go do it. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. But I got to talk to her, and she's so proud. She gets worried about us traveling. I'm like, well, Mama, they're paying for it. She's oh, okay, be careful. <laughs> um, yeah, she's, <laughs> it's my mama. <laughs> she's in a nursing home now. Um, Hey, don't judge me. She lived with me for a year. One of us was going to the home. Um, so. <laughs> she wasn't 10 minutes in the door. She was like, I am so glad to be here. <laughs> and 
we kept encouraging her to get, you know, involved in the activities there. And one of the biggest activities is bingo. And she's like, no, bingo's a sin. Well, she's been there three years now. It's a religion. <laughs> yeah. She goes to bingo three times a week. She only goes to church once a week. <laughs> so, uh, so precious. Well, <clears throat> I know you ladies can relate. I have been on a diet since 1996, and uh, <laughs> it's going good. <laughs> uh, I, when I did comedy before, I did comedy in the comedy clubs. I was a little bitty size two. I got into Christian comedy. I was still a two. It just had an X on it. <laughs> well, hey, Paul said to buffet our bodies, so I did. <laughs> and if you are not laughing at that, you need to read the word. So, uh, yes, I got all the way up to a 2X. I noticed one thing about clothing, you know, sizes. When you're a kid, your age is the same as your size. You're a 2, you're in a 2, 3, you're in 3. <laughs> that cycled back around for me, 44, 46, <laughs> 48. <laughs> I just turned 55. I had to get to work. Um, couldn't be that. <laughs> Couldn't go there, but I tried every diet known to man at first. You know, I did Weight Watchers. Any y'all in that cult? <laughs> so, <laughs> got your little points calculator out for them donuts out there, don't you? <laughs> oh, I can have anything. I just got to count it. <laughs> yeah, that's what my little sponsor's like. Kay, you're a big girl. At your size, you're only going to get 27 points a day. And I'm like, <laughs> I scored 92. Do I win a prize? <laughs> And that was for breakfast. <laughs> I didn't know how many points were in a pound of bacon. I didn't know. God. No. <laughs> oh, that's precious. Don't be funnier than me, honey. <laughs> Don't do that. It's Mother's Day. It's not Father's Day. Some of y'all are in a little bit of a shock. You're like, does she realize we're in the house of the Lord? <laughs> Job 8.12 says he fills my mouth with laughter. Yes, yes, he does. And we're going we're gonna to talk some more uh, about some other stuff later, but we're going to plow. That's what we call it. Just plow some hearts so we can plant some seeds. Y'all okay with that? Yes, and some of you men are in shock because there's a woman in your pulpit. <clears throat> No, I can tell y'all are a free church because you don't have your drummer in a box. <laughs> it's like, we can't have that too loud now. <laughs> so y'all are, y'all are full of freedom, I can tell it. Um, I have no idea what I was talking about. <laughs> Oh, about my weight. Oh, my goodness, yes. So I finally found something that worked. I, uh, it's uh, called Simple Fat Burn. Um, I call it meat, grass, and four fruit. <laughs> I'm a little bitter about it. And I, I quit sugar um, about an hour and a half ago uh, back there. <laughs> uh, no, I, did. I quit sugar two years ago. I lost 45 pounds in nine months. So, yay. <laughs> I went from a, 20, a size 20 to a size 12 in that nine months. And, and since Christmas, I've gone to a 12 to a 16. So we're working on a different plan now. <laughs> now, I told Pastor, I got to get back on that diet plan uh, when I get back. But uh, I did quit sugar. That was a lot of the, how I, I lost it. And I didn't stab nobody, so you know I got Jesus. <laughs> so I actually uh, hit a bottom with that, with my eating and the sugar. I woke up one day and, and I, put, I was like, you know, I got to do something. I got to burn some calories, you know. I, so I set fire to a carrot cake. And um, <laughs> are you having to explain that to her, ma'am? <laughs> She's like, she said a carrot cake on fire and it burned some calories. 
No, I'm just kidding. Y'all are precious. Um, no, actually, what I did, my, I'm married to a, a diabetic, and uh, but he loves his sugar, and so he had bought a bag of powdered white powdered sugar donuts. Oh yeah, some of y'all just left the building. <laughs> y'all are like, oh, I love those. Yeah, so do I. And he left them sitting on the end table at the house, and being the good wife I am, I threw my mouth in front of that bag to save his life. <laughs> I'm his helper. <laughs> so I, I purposed to eat like four or five of them. An hour and 30 donuts later, that bag was empty. Yeah, that was my bottom. And I wear black pajamas, so I had all this powder. <laughs> it looked like a bad CSI cocaine crime scene. It was not pretty. <laughs> So that's when I decided I had to had to do something, and uh, and I did. <clears throat> um, so, well, usually when I'm in a group like this, I say something like, "My name's Kay, I'm an alcoholic." <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> I just do that to see how many of you get caught off guard. And go, hey, Kay, because <laughs> some of you do look a little familiar. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Nine o'clock service. That's the holy people, isn't it? Yes, y'all are up early. Got some, woo, get some Jesus and caffeine. We're going to church. <laughs> the 11 o'clock people just went to bed, seven you know, seven this morning. So, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, but no, I do that. Uh, by the grace of God and the fellowship of a 12-step program, I can't tell you which one because we're anonymous. Um, And now through the Christ-centered 12-step program called Celebrate Recovery, I have been sober 21 years and eight months. <laughs> By the grace of God. <clears throat> when I remember when I got my one-year chip, I called a friend up and I was like, I got my one-year chip. She's like, I don't even know what that means. I said, it means I hadn't had a drink in a year. She said, I hadn't had a drink in 35 years. Where's my chip? <laughs> On your shoulder? And alcoholism in my family, uh, I come from a long line of uh, alcoholics, and uh, it's more than an uh, addiction. It's an allergy, because um, if I drink, I will break out in a bad marriage. And, um, <laughs> that's happened twice. Um, oh, that got quiet. <laughs> Does the preacher know she's been divorced and in our pulpit? <laughs> I got your number. I do this all the time. I know what you're thinking. Uh, <clears throat> well, I married one that was a boxer, and I was his punching bag. Oh, it's fine. I killed him. <laughs> it happens every time. Divorced, y'all like, mm hmm Murder? Yes, sister. <laughs> he hits you, he's going down. This is Texas. <laughs> These are my Old Testament people here. There's my eye for an eye, sister. <laughs> the second one was headed down that same path, and uh, I left him at, after four months. Um, I've had yogurt to last longer than four months, but... Um, <laughs> And with a lot more culture, I might add. <laughs> um, but yes, uh, so I married now. I've been married 20 years. I met my husband in that 12-step program. I mean, I don't recommend that. <laughs> <laughs> going into recovery, looking for a healthy relationship, that's kind of like going to a moto, looking for a clean drink of water. Um, <laughs> But it's turned out okay for us. Um, <clears throat> yeah, he's a, he's a good man, and um, I hadn't killed him yet. So, <laughs> uh, Christian Mingle ain't got nothing on drunks or us, let me tell you. <laughs> so. <laughs> I used to run a jail ministry um, right after they let me out. Oh, right up until... <laughs> 
right up in, see, I hadn't had enough coffee this morning. Oh, and see, some of y'all are laughing, and some of you are like, well, my goodness, she's divorced and been in prison. <laughs> Does Pastor Mark know she's been in prison? <laughs> oh. Where do you think I met your preacher? <laughs> So kidding. <laughs> Y'all are amazing. <laughs> um, no, um, so I have my daughter here with me. Wave at Kaylee in the back, back there. She's my awesome child. <laughs> Everybody now she's like, I'm so uncomfortable. She's my wardrobe director, because um, if it weren't for her, I'd be up here in a flannel moo moo right now. <laughs> she helps me a lot. We were shopping last week for something and. Uh, I have this little favorite boutique that I go to. Um, okay, Goodwill. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and they had this pantsuit. I love pantsuits, but it was three sizes too big for me. And, you know, it's Goodwill, so they only have one that somebody threw out. And um, <clears throat> so I'm standing, most people just move right on. I'm standing there trying to figure it out, going, I could get in that. <laughs> I just got to set some goals. Y'all are just precious. Some of you men just still look in shock. <laughs> Y'all better loosen up or I'll come back Father's Day. <laughs> I had a guy tell me last night, he goes, I didn't expect you to be funny because you're, you're a woman. And I was like, well, I didn't expect you to be rude. <laughs> but we're both surprised. <laughs> well, I just don't think women are funny. And I was like, um, okay. And see, what I think that is, I hear that a lot. I, I, I get that a lot. People say that to me. And then they're like surprised. And I'm like, well, it's because, see, women, as women, we're in tune to everything. We know everything, our brothers, our fathers, our husbands, our uh, sibling, everything that they go through. And men are vaguely aware there's some other people living in the house. <laughs> So women will laugh at men and women comedians, and men are sitting there going, what's she talking about? That ain't funny. <laughs> Sorry, that was just a public service message right there. <laughs> I kind of forgot where I was at. Um, <laughs> oh, like y'all work the whole time you're at your job. Y'all take a break. I'm on break right now. <laughs> no. <laughs> so I am getting older. I'm 55 now. I'll be 56 this year. I love all the senior discounts, you know, Goodwill, Tuesday, 10% off. I know that shirt looked familiar. Um, <laughs> no, just kidding. Just kidding. Um, uh, I do forget a lot of things, uh, though important things. I leave the stove on. I leave curling irons on. My husband is always like, baby, you got to quit forgetting. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank the Lord you're here. Um, never thought to just quit forgetting. <laughs> I'm going to get right on that. <clears throat> I mean, right before we left, I washed a load of water. <laughs> Every woman in here has done that. <laughs> there are discussion groups breaking out everywhere. I not only washed it, honey, I rinsed it and spun it dry. I went back to get my clothes out with expectation. <laughs> I, I over-spiritualized stuff sometimes. I thought my clothes had been raptured. <laughs> you are awesome. <laughs> you are awesome. Your worship time, that worship time, I tell you what, y'all about had me tore up from the floor up and, and he about had me run around this building. So, I love the Lord, and I love to worship Him, and uh, so there was no joke in that. Y'all relax. Um, 
But I do, I forget a lot of things. I forget to return library books. I just call it, you know, supporting my local library now because I did that recently and it was $22 in fines. Oh, I'm not kidding. And one of the books was called Spirit Driven Success. <laughs> so I need spirit driven memory. <laughs> so, <clears throat> but yeah, and one of the things I've noticed about aging is that um, my eyebrows are now turning white and um, my facial hair is dark. What's up with that? <laughs> God's got a sense of humor. Um, I have to get my eyebrows dyed and my chin waxed. So. Yeah, some of this is a little too real for you, isn't it? <laughs> I'm just a real person. I got an eyebrow that grows at the speed of light. It was fine when I left the hotel. I got here to open the car door. Just <laughs> <laughs> and don't you men go, ooh, because I've seen y'all get a nose hair caught in your jacket zipper. <laughs> <laughs> and do not pluck one of those eyebrows ladies it will leave a crop circle in the middle of your eyebrow <laughs> I plucked one one time I think it was gray matter came out my, my husband thinks that's what's wrong with my memory so <clears throat> uh my husband is a carpenter, and uh, we bought a, a house about 17 years ago. It was a fixer-upper. <laughs> it still is. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we were living in a trailer. Uh, I mean, I don't want to swell up with pride. We had some cash. It was a double wide. Um, <laughs> Two-story. Um, Uh, so, and don't get upset if you live in a trailer. I mean, I've, I've driven around. I know there's some here. Um, don't go home, jump off, you double wide. You'll sprain your ankle. Um, <laughs> don't get upset. Because um, we had that trailer, and, um, you know, they have to split a double wide in half to move them. And that always made me nervous. I'm like, what if one of the trucks wrecks? <laughs> You'd be sitting in your living room going, it's a nice day out. We have lost half of everything we own. <laughs> and coming down I-30 the other day, uh, Kayla and I saw just half of a double wide, we, 30 miles. We never saw the other truck. I, I told you I over-spiritualized stuff. I grabbed her hand. I said, baby, let's pray. That could be a divorce right there. The Lord really knew what he was doing when he gave me a girl because uh, boys are a little different. <laughs> I kept one boy one day, uh, one time for four hours, 17 years ago. <laughs> I've never done it again since. Uh, we were at McDonald's and he climbed up on top of Ronald McDonald's head because, you know, boys will do that. And I told him to get down. I had to leave my Big Mac to tell him to get down. And next thing I know, and this was the statue, Ronald was sitting on a bench like this. He slid down in between Ronald's legs. Next thing I hear is, I'm stuck, I'm stuck. <laughs> <coughs> I'm like, oh, you're not stuck. <laughs> he went duck. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It took five grown men and stripping that baby down to his Power Rangers underwear and McDonald's spray on biscuit butter <laughs> to get him out. <laughs> you know, we didn't have Facebook and Twitter and all that back then, but I went home and emailed everybody I knew. I said, I just saw Ronald McDonald give birth to a four-year-old boy. <laughs> oh, y'all are amazing. <clears throat> Well, the pastor told you I have some jewelry. I don't have your standard merchandise, so please stop by the table and just say hey to us and hug us. We, we lo have loved being here, and we love y'all. Um, I don't have the standard merchandise that most, you know, comedians and speakers. I'm just now starting to, you know, get some of that. I got a, a, a toaster oven and um, <laughs> a couple of lamps <laughs> and a crock pot. And um, <clears throat> that crock pot, all it needs is a cord. It's a good one. 
it's, it's wireless. And um, <laughs> so, <laughs> now I have some jewelry and, and I sell these posters. And these posters, when you put a couple hundred of them together, they weigh a lot. And so <laughs> they're on sale. <laughs> because we're going to wallpaper y'all's uh, kitchen if uh, we don't set. But there, it's a reminder to me. It says, on the darkest days when I feel inadequate, unloved, or unworthy, I remember whose daughter I am, and I straighten my crown. And uh, so those are, uh, thank you. Those are uh, $5 or two for 10. It's a deal. Um <laughs> No, it, the sign out there says six for 20, but we're going to do eight for $20 today so we can get rid of them um, because they are heavy. But um, the purple has meaning to me. I usually have my nails painted purple and I have purple glasses, but I wasn't wearing purple this weekend. But it's a reminder to me, the Lord showed me a few years ago that I spent a lot of years in darkness and depression. And so he took my blues and covered it with his blood. And today we have purple. So that's where that. And um, when I was praying about this, uh, us being together this morning, I didn't tell this story last night, but I feel like the Lord laid this on my heart this morning to tell y'all. Um, people ask me all the time, well, how did you end up on the Shonda Pierce tour bus? And sometimes they don't say it very nicely, like, how did you end up? And so my little smart aleck answer is, uh, well, I drove to Nashville and walked up the steps. <laughs> <clears throat> but the real answer is, is uh, I was driving home from Walmart one night back in December of 2014, and I got a phone call that said uh, Shonda Pierce is holding a um, Christian women, you know, Christian comedians women's retreat at her house, and you've been selected to go. And uh, so that answer is <clears throat> all these years that I had, I quit the club comedy in 2001 when I got saved. I got saved at a basketball arena in Atlanta Phillips Arena. Um, it was at a Hawks game. It was a little awkward. Um, <laughs> just seeing if y'all are listening. Jesus will get it done. It don't matter what's going on. Now, it was at a Joyce Meyer conference, and I'd been studying the Bible. My stepfather had passed away. He was the only man of authority in my life that had never abused me. <clears throat> and he had died, and I just didn't understand why God didn't heal him. And what God showed me in the next several years when I finally surrendered and gave my life to him, and God told me on the floor of Phillips Arena, and I was still working comedy clubs. I was a mom then. I wasn't traveling, but I was still working clubs. I was still cussing like a sailor <clears throat> at the clubs. I'd say I'd gonna go in there to be a light, and then I'd shut off the light the minute I was in there. It snuffed my light right out because I wanted to fit in. I was that chameleon. <clears throat> and what the Lord told me on the floor of Phillips Arena is I want your mind, I want your heart, I want your pocketbook, I want your TV, I want your radio, and I want that mouth. <clears throat> And he still wants that mouth. Uh, I don't cuss anymore. Um, not when y'all are around. But um, <laughs> I ain't perfect. But um, <clears throat> but the Bible says that uh, the spies that went in to, to spy out the promised land, they used their mouth for evil. They came back and gave an evil report. You know, they saw giants instead of seeing God as their deliverer. And, and God counted that as evil. And so I caught myself. He caught me recently saying a lot of negative things about myself. You know, I need dental work and I need this and we've got bills and we've got this. And, and the Lord has just been working on me to just have that faith and trust him. And... Uh, <clears throat> You know, as human beings, that's a tall order for us because, you know, we're created in his image and, and we think that we can do it all. And I, I can't tell you how many times in my life that my actions have shown him, it's okay, God, I got it. And then I'll mess it up. <clears throat> but the story I wanted to tell you about getting on the Shonda Pierce tour bus was really about, the, it's really based on the story of Jonah and Nineveh. You know, the Bible says that Jonah went down to Joppa and Jonah was going down to Tarshish, and he went down into the belly of the boat. 
Now that's geographically, he was going down to Joppa because it was south. <coughs> um, but it also was a sign of Jonah was going down in his life. He was running from God. He was not obeying God. And I went through that. I, God had been calling me for a, a good little while to start doing this again in his house, in his arena, to plow hearts with laughter so that some seeds could be planted. And I was terrified because I was overweight. I needed dental work. I had all the excuses. We had gone through years of poverty. My husband was in an accident, and we spent uh, several years of him in rehab. And <clears throat> I had all the excuses in the world. And then it just got to the point to where I got more afraid to, uh, to not do it than I was afraid to do it. And so I, I look at myself, my life. I was on the boat to Tarshish. I went down and got on the boat, got, went down to Tarshish, went down in the belly of the boat, and there were storms. There were horrible storms during that time. And um, it wasn't until, you know, and even in the story of Jonah, God provided a safety net, that final safety net of that whale, you know, for Jonah to finally obey him. He saved him by, and I was thinking I was going to become whale spit at that if I didn't do what God was calling me to do. And so what I have seen is just in those steps of obedience, just in saying, okay, Lord, I get it. I finally got in enough pain that it drove me to my face before him to just not care you know, what others thought of my weight or what they thought of our life or our financial situation or whatever. And, you know, Matthew 30, uh, 6, 33 says that <clears throat> we should seek first his kingdom and all these things will be added unto. Well, I had a huge added unto list and I put my eyes and my heart and my face and my lips and my prayers were all over that added unto list, begging God begging God for work for my husband, begging him for the money to pay our bills, begging him, added unto's, added unto, that's all I could think about, all I could pray about. I got in enough pain, and I got far enough down on my face before the foot of the cross, before the feet of Jesus, I forgot completely about the added unto's. I sought his kingdom and his face, not his hand. And when I took my eyes and my heart and my lips off of that added unto list, he put his hands on it. <clears throat> I literally, <clears throat> after I quit the ministry that I had been doing for 10 years, and God had been calling me out of that and calling me out of that, Two weeks later, I had dinner with Shonda Pierce, and she slapped my leg and said, get your calendar out, baby. I'm going to fill it up. So I don't know why I was supposed to tell you all that story this morning, but I felt like that's what the Lord wanted me to share this morning. And um, <clears throat> I like to close with this, is that um, my favorite scripture, one of my favorite scriptures is Revelation 12:11 which says that they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. Now, for years, I thought that the word of my testimony was all the things that, I, that had happened, all the things that I had endured, all of the things that God had overcome in my life. And there were 15 years of child abuse and 20 years of alcohol abuse and four years of domestic violence. And I know I make, joke about, make jokes about those things. I'm not laughing at those things. I am laughing in spite of them. And so all of that stuff had happened to me. And I thought that was, you know, that's my testimony. And what the Lord has shown me, that the word of my testimony <clears throat> is not that. That's my story. And it's important that we tell our stories. Because our stories, our pain, our suffering, it all has a purpose. But if it's kept secret... It will never serve its purpose. It will just be pain and it will just be suffering. Because <clears throat> our story is meant for his glory. <clears throat> but what I've learned is that the word of my testimony, the way that they overcame him, the way that they overcame the enemy, was not with their story about what happened. It's with the word of God 
planted and rooted in our hearts and applied to our lives. The word of my testimony is that I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I can lend to many nations, but I will never again have to borrow. That I will wait upon the Lord and he will renew my strength and I will mount up with wings as eagles and I can run and not grow weary and I can walk and I will not faint. That by his stripes on that cross, I am healed from all of the addiction and from all of the abuse. That greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And no weapon formed against me will ever prosper. It doesn't say no weapon will ever be formed against me. It says it will never prosper. And the, the word says that I myself, that every tongue that rises up against me, I myself will show to be in the wrong. And that I will choose every day whom I will serve. And as for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. And that I will praise him for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, O Lord. I know them very well. God bless y'all. Happy Mother's Day. I love you, Athens, Texas. <laughs> <laughs>